button mic check, please. Hey there, this is Andrew Triple for a video and mic check. Thanks. Loud and clear, thank you. Mike and Michelle, are we um, ready to go at four, do you think? Yeah, staff is ready to go when, whenever you are. Okay. Um, we are missing one commissioner, I believe. Yeah, if commissioners can all turn on their um, okay. cameras for us. Okay, so um, are you ready, Mr. Maloney? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to call to order the August 12th, 2021 meeting of the Santa Rosa Planning Commission. Uh, before we start, I'm gonna like to read the following statement. Due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders N-25-20, and N-29-20, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The planning commissioners will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Commissioners and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item number four, public comment, or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by raising their hand and will be given the ability to address the commission. Um, Mr. Maloney, if you'd like to call roll. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Let the record reflect that all commissioners are present except Commissioner Okrepke. I'm sorry, Commissioner Holton. Thank you. Um, item 2.1, study session, which we have none. Uh, item three, approval of minutes, which we have no minutes today. So we're on to item number four, public comments. And I'd like to open the public comment period now for any item that's not included in this meeting's agenda. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker will have three minutes. The countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so, and your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. Do we have any? Thank you, Chair Weeks. At this time, no one is raising their hand, and we have one member from the public in attendance. Thank you. Okay, so with that, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and move on 
to item five. Uh, item five is planning commissioner's report and I'd like to read the statement of purpose for the planning commission. The planning commission is charged with carrying out the California planning and zoning laws in the city of Santa Rosa. Duties include implementing of plans, ordinances and policies related to land use matters, assisting in writing and implementing the general plan and area plan, holding public meetings and acting on proposed changes to the zoning code, zoning map, general plan, tentative subdivision maps and undertaking special planning studies as needed. Um, 5.2, are any uh, committee reports for a subdivision or waterway? Don't believe there are any. Um, there will be a subdivision meeting next week, uh, but there hasn't been one since the last meeting of the Planning Commission. Um, so item 5.3, commissioner reports. Anybody have anything they'd like to report out on? Um, I would like to mention that um, as of the first meeting in September, we will be changing our start time to 4.30. And thank you all for um, your input on that. And uh, then number item six is department reports, Mr. Triple. Hey, good afternoon, Chair Weeks and uh, members of the commission. Uh, thank you for your attendance and uh, service today. Um, we have just three quick notes that I would like to share with you. As uh, Chair Weeks just noted, the uh, effective September 1, all of our review authority meetings, Cultural Heritage Board, Design Review Board, and Planning Commission will be aligned uh, to 4.30 p.m. start times. Uh, we feel this will, will be of great benefit to the public um, in that having these varied start times in the past can get a bit confusing but then it also allows us to provide better service to all of the boards because that's, it's more consistent uh, for staff to uh, service all the boards with, uh, with that start time. The other important thing that will happen um, in September is we met with uh, all three of the, the chairs, Chair Weeks and then the um, Chair Weigel and um, Chair Muser from the uh, Cultural Heritage Board to talk about the transition back to the chamber and this hybrid meeting format. So of course um, we met and then uh, the, the COVID Delta variant uh, <laughs> emerged and, and so we're, we're kind of reassessing, but at, at this point in time, uh, the direction that we've been given is that uh, all three of the, the primary planning division review authorities, Planning Commission, Design Review Board, and Cultural Heritage Board can go to a hybrid public meeting format. Uh, during the chair's meeting, it was felt that September would be a good opportunity for uh, commission and board members to start to gain experience with that board for with that hybrid format, as well as for staff to uh, return to the chamber and support that as well. So um, we'll have further instruction, but you can anticipate that for the September planning commission meetings, that we will have a hybrid format where um, staff and members of the commission who would wish to be in person in the chamber would participate in person. Public would still participate via Zoom until um, the, uh, the orders are lifted. So um, that would be effective then for the September 9th meeting, which we will hold and the September 26th meeting as well. So uh, any any questions on that? We'll have more information forthcoming. Um, and then uh, the next thing is uh, we, with the September 9th meeting, we will be uh, looking forward to welcoming back uh, former Commissioner Cisco. Uh, she will, we are uh, onboarding her presently and um, she will be taking her oath and uh, will be then a commissioner effective at the September 9th meeting. So we'll look forward to for return to the board or to the commission rather. Uh, and with that, uh, Chair, we don't have any other uh, department notes uh, to provide. So we'll, we'll uh, end this department report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Triple. Um, item seven is statement of abstentions. Uh, is there any abstentions today? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to consent items of which we have none. And then on to item number nine, which is a scheduled item public hearing, uh, 9.1. It's uh, 
Erudite Dispensary, Cannabis Retail, CEQA Exempt Project, Conditional Use Permit, 3059 Coffee Lane, CUP 19-056. It is an ex parte item. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Commissioner Carter. Do you have anything to disclose? Only that I've visited the site. Thank you. Nothing further. Commissioner Duggan. I also visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Krepke? I have nothing to disclose. Thank you. Vice Chair Peterson? I also visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. And I visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Uh, now with this item, uh, we did get late, late correspondence from staff that indicates there's a request for a continuance on this item. So right now I'd like to turn it over to uh, planner Susie Murray. Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon, Chair Weeks and members of the commission. Yes, I am requesting, actually the applicant is requesting a continuance. Um, the purpose for the continuance is to bolster the traffic study. Um, and if we would like to come back to you on September 9th, if that's agreeable. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Um, so with that, we do need a motion. Uh, and so for continuance, is there someone who's willing to make a motion to continue with this item to September 9th? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? No second. Thank you. Uh, that was moved by Commissioner Krupke, seconded by Vice Chair Peterson. Um, so Mr. Maloney, will you Take roll, please. Yes, one moment. Commissioner Carter. Aye. Commissioner Duggan. Aye. Commissioner Holton is absent. Commissioner Okrepke. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. And Chair Weeks? Aye. So that, so that passes with five ayes. One absence and one soon to be filled vacancy. Um, so then we'll move on to item 9.2. This is also a public hearing. Uh, Valero Gas Station is a CEQA exempt project, conditional use permit 4501, Highway 12. CUP 21-007, and it is also an ex parte item. Uh, so Commissioner Carter, do you have anything to disclose? I visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Duggan? I also visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Krepke? I visited the site and have nothing else to disclose. Thank you. Vice Chair Peterson? I also visited the site and have no additional information to disclose. Thank you. And I also visited the site and have no further information to disclose. So with that, we have uh, Ms. Shikali, if you would like to lead us off. Sure, thank you. Okay, let me first share my screen. Okay. So thank you, Chair Weeks and members of the Planning Commission. The project before you today is a conditional use permit for Valero gas station located at 4501 Highway 12. The applicant is proposing to sell beer and wine for offsite consumption from the existing Valero gas station. This picture shows the existing gas station. And uh, the project is located in the um, Northeast quadrant on the corner of Mission Boulevard and Highway 12. The site is zoned neighborhood commercial consistent with the general plan land use designation. And um, the surrounding area land uses are a mix of residential offices and uh, commercial uses. Brief summary of the project history. The conditional use permit application was submitted in January of this year, 
and it was deemed complete in March, and the notice of pending application was mailed on June 12th of this year. And here is a site plan for the existing gas station, which has been in operation since late 1990. And this slide shows the existing floor plan for the store. The walk-in closet, let me click here, okay. Uh, the walk-in cooler is on the opposite wall from the entrance. I'm showing here in the blue rectangular and the coolers are equipped with locks to secure the merchandise during periods when alcohol sales are not allowed. Also, the entire gas station is equipped with security cameras. And Santa Rosa crime density map. So uh, the Santa Rosa Police Department operates uh, nine patrol beats, and the project is located in beat four, as shown in this map. And in this beat, crime rate has been significantly lower. Also, the police department has provided a list of arrests and citations that occurred between July 6, 2018 and July 7, 2021 within 1,000 foot radius from the project site. And only 28 were alcohol-related arrest, arrest or citation within that two years period. And additionally, the site is not located in close approximately to any school or religious facility. Uh, since the notice of pending application was sent, staff has received three emails and comments were regarding concentration of facilities selling alcoholic beverages for off-site consumption and the sale of alcoholic beverages from a gas station. So to respond to these comments based on the data available, the Department of Alcoholic uh, Beverage Control would issue up to 10 licenses for off-sale alcohol in this area. And only three have been issued for this area. So this will be the fourth one. And our concentration is not associated with an objective measure and therefore cannot be specifically analyzed. However, um, ABC criteria for license issuance provides a tool for evaluating potential for overconcentration. Based upon ABC criteria, approval of the proposed use would not result in an overconcentration. And the proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and it qualifies for class one categorical exemption under CEQA guidelines section 15301 in that the project is located within an existing structure involving a negligible expansion of an existing use that will not result in significant impacts. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Planning Commission, by resolution, approve a conditional use permit to allow sale of beer and wine for off-site consumption for the property located at 4501 Highway 12. And this is my contact information for anyone who wants to contact me. I know the applicant doesn't have any presentation, but they are available to answer if you have any questions. And that was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of staff at this time before we open the public hearing? Okay, seeing none, um, we'll go ahead and um, open the public hearing. I, I'm opening the public hearing on this item. And if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. The countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so and your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. Mr. Host, do we have any? Buddy? Chair Weeks, um, at this time, no one is raising their hand and we have one member of the public on the phone called in. No one is raising 
Okay, so is that member of the public for this item? We we can't tell which item they're here. Oh, okay. For. There's only one member of the public in the lobby. Okay. So seeing no hands raised, um, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this item and bring it back to the commission. Um, do you have any questions of staff or, or uh, Vice Chair Peterson? Um, I, I'll have a question for staff and, and when appropriate applicant as well. Um, the question for staff I think is, is pretty straightforward. Are the, I mean, are these the standard uh, hours for this type of license? You can sell alcohol all day except for four hours between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m.? I believe that uh, time period is being regulated by ABC, not by the planning. Like maybe um, ABC didn't tell anything about the hours, and those are the hours that they can sell alcohol. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Vice Chair Peters or Commissioner Duggan, and then we'll go back to Vice Chair Peterson for uh, questions of the applicants. Sorry. Um, also for uh, Mr. Kelly, um, you noted that the cooler is going to have locks on the door so people can't um, take beer and wine out of the cooler. What about, are they going to have any um, stored like cases of beer in boxes on the floor inside the store outside of the cooler or like red wine that's typically not cooled in the cooler? Is that going to be inside the store? Based on the information that applicant provided, they will be storing inside of the walk-in cooler and uh, the email I received from the ABC, ABC did a site visit and site visit, and they said uh, they meet with all the requirements for alcohol on site, like a, a saving or a storing alcohol on site. Oops, I was muted. Any other questions for Mr. Kali? Okay, uh, then. Oh, I'm sorry, Chair Weeks. I did have just an additional response, um, okay. Ms. Shikali, that is regulated um, by the ABC and also is found in the Business and Professions Code for the allowable hours for sale of alcohol. Thank you very much. Um, Vice Chair Peterson, you had a question of the applicant? Uh, yes, I uh, kind of a, a general question. The staff report mentioned that this is looking at being maybe one or two percent. Um, of your sales, you've operated for 31 years without doing this. Uh, why the change? I'm um, just letting Chair Weeks and Commissioners know that the applicant is not um, on the call right now. Oh. It's like they were previously, they may have been dropped. So I don't know if that's something that. Um, Planner Shikali is able to answer, but the uh, applicant is no longer on the call. I can't answer that. I, I believe they are the new owner who took over this gas station in 2014 or maybe 16, and they decided to add that sale at this time. So they, I believe in 2014 they took over this one, but I don't know the reason why they want to add it right now after six years. Uh, that that's fine. Not not determinative. Thank you. Um, any other comments, questions? Okay. So, um, if somebody would like to enter this resolution, don't all speak at once. No. <laughs> Mr. Duggan, thank you. I will. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'll move a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa making findings and determinations and approving a conditional use permit to allow the existing Valero gas station located at 4501 Highway 12, APN 182-490-016 to sell beer and wine for off-site consumption, file number CUP21-007 and wait for the reading. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. So that was moved by Commissioner Duggan and seconded by Commissioner Okrepke. Uh, so we'll start with comments with Commissioner Carter. 
Uh, well, this all looks pretty straightforward to me. It appears that the application meets the requirements of the ABC and can and I can make the findings that are necessary for uh, approving the use permit resolution. So I'll be supporting the project. Thank you, Commissioner Duggan. I too can make all the findings, so I'll be supporting the resolution. Thank you, Commissioner Krepke. I can make all the required findings and we'll be uh, in favor of the application. Thanks, and Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, well, if, if my comments didn't give a little bit away, I, what a contrast with the CUPs we see for cannabis facilities. Um, you know, with those, we're, we're getting traffic studies and odor mitigation plans, security plans. It's got limited hours of operation. Um, and, you know, in this case, we've got, we want to sell alcohol and we can do it until two in the morning and starting at 6 a.m. And uh, I just, I, I have to say, I, I agree with uh, the public comments. I, I don't see the, the point of this. I, you know, there's already plenty of places selling alcohol in the area. Um, they've been operating for 31 years without it. Um, so, I, you know, at least there's no business case I see. And I think that granting the permit would be a, a nuisance or could be injurious or detrimental uh, to the public interest, health, safety, convenience, or welfare. I, I don't see what possible good thing could happen from selling someone beer at 1.30 in the morning or 6 in the morning, um, and then them getting in their car and driving off. So um, I, I do not, I'm not able to make that finding. Thank you. Um, I will be supporting this project, and I want to thank uh, Planner Shikali for sending us that detailed information regarding the uh, use, and, use and necessity. Um, that's not the right term, but uh, the, I think you know what I mean. So anyway, um, with that, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and um, Mr. Maloney, if you could call the roll, please. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Commissioner Carter? Aye. Commissioner Duggan? Aye. Commissioner Holton is absent. Commissioner Okrepke? Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? No. And Chair Weeks? Aye. So that passes with uh, four ayes and one no. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson voting no and one absence, that being Commissioner Holton. So uh, that will move on then to the next item, which is item 9.3. Um, it's a public hearing on the, and it's an update on the density bonus. And um, Mr. Gus, Gustafson is going to be our presenter on this. Thank you, and I'm getting, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna turn on my video so you can see me. Here I am, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, uh, my name is Andy Gustafson. I'm presenting to you an update to the density bonus ordinance. Uh, we're recommending approval. I can advance it. This ordinance update will um, implement state law and it will adjust the supplemental density bonus program that's a part of our local ordinance and different and added to the um, state law. The um, new state law came into effect in January, 2021. Uh, it rolled up a number of legislative initiatives that have occurred over the last couple of years. And what it did was to lower the affordable uh, set-aside requirement needed to qualify for a state density bonus. It increased the maximum of the state's density bonus from 35 to 50%. And also it added a new provision that 100% affordable housing project can now allow 20% moderate income rental units. That did not, um, was not allowed previously. It also uh, changed a little bit how waivers or incentives are administered. Um, now it limits the maximum number to four 
and uh, previously it was not limited. Beyond four, the city can elect to um, allow more waivers. And then it um, made clarification of unobstructed access uh, to a transit facility that helped to um, resolve some uncertain language. And then it also uh, further reduced or continued the trend of limiting the amount of parking that is required of projects in which local agencies such as Santa Rosa can impose on projects within a half mile of a transit facility. The, um, the, key, the key changes uh, that were uh, that have been triggered by state law causes us also to modify our supplemental density bonus. Um, some members of the commission may not have been here when the city adopted um, its current density bonus program. When it did so, it implemented the state law in effect at that time, but also went further and allowed for a supplemental density that allowed projects that qualified that were located within the downtown uh, downtown station area plan area and a North Santa Rosa station plan area uh, to get additional density beyond what the state would allow. In order to achieve that density, um, projects had to provide additional affordability or additional community benefits. But what it did was was to allow density to pick up where the state's density left off. Now, uh, with the increase going from um, 35 to 50%, the point at which our supplemental density program begins uh, has been adjusted, as is illustrated by this chart. Um, we have three tiers of supplemental density, and previously, um, you could get up to a 60%, 80%, or 100% increase. We are maintaining that maximum, but the amount of supplemental density for each of those tiers have been adjusted to 10%, 30%, and 50%. Um, also, with the uh, density bonus ordinance, we did a little bit of cleanup to make the uh, many tables into one consolid table, consolidated table, makes it a bit easier to read and administer. So that's really the main changes to the density bonus ordinance that is um, uh, proposed for this amendment. The, um, the density bonus ordinance was adopted in January, 2019, the one that uh, we're amending today. And at that time, when we added the supplemental density, we conducted environmental review and we prepared and uh, the city council certified a negative declaration. That negative declaration continues to be valid. There have been no fundamental changes to the project environment or circumstance, nor has this project altered any effect of the previously evaluated ordinance namely the 100% maximum density that can be achieved with the project exercising the supplemental density has not been altered. We have not increased the total density that may be permitted in the city. Therefore, uh, a subsequent environmental review is not required. So, um, I'm available for any questions, uh, details. Um, the recommendation is that by resolution, the planning commission, um, that, that a resolution, the planning commission recommend the city council introduce an ordinance to amend the city zoning code chapter 2031, density bonus and other developer incentives to be consistent with state government code section 65915 density bonuses and other incentives. And thank you, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Gesselton. Um, is, are there any questions of him by my fellow commissioners? Just scrolling, scrolling through to see if I see anybody with questions. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, 
on this item. If the host could stop sharing the screen, it would be helpful. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'll do that as soon as I control my screen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I am going to am opening the public hearing on this item. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. The countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. And your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown time. Uh, Mr. Maloney, do we have anybody? Thank you, Chair. We do not. We have one caller and no other members of the public, and the caller is not raising their hand. Thank you. So with that, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this item and bring it back to the commission and ask again if anybody has any questions um, on this, oops, on this um, item. Okay, then is somebody willing to go ahead and enter the resolution? Yeah, I'll go ahead and move a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa, recommending that the City Council adopt an ordinance to amend City Zoning Code Chapter 20-31, density bonus and other developer incentives to be consistent with State Government Code Section 65915, density bonuses and other incentives file number REZ21-003, and waive further reading of the text. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Commissioner Carter, second. So um, then we'll bring it to the commission for comments. So we'll go ahead and start with you, Commissioner Carter. Well, it appears that the ordinance as proposed uh, brings us in line with the state without hampering any of our abilities to award density bonuses, especially for lower income projects. So I'll be able to make all of the necessary findings and support the uh, staff's recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Duggan. Yeah, I want to thank you, thank staff for the clear um, description of the changes and walking us through um, state changes and it was very easy to follow and um, I can make all the required findings. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Krepke. Yeah, uh, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Um, I don't have anything really else to add. So uh, I'll just say that I can make the required findings and we'll be uh, supporting the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, yes, uh, not much to add. I, I hope that this does, you know, further the goal of getting more affordable housing built, um, brings us in line, obviously, with the state requirements, um, and I can make all the required findings. Thank you. And I also can make all the required findings and appreciate uh, the, um, I'm not gonna say simple because it's not simple, but the, the clear, concise um, presentation from Mr. Gustafson. Um, and I do have one question I should have asked before, and that is, do you have any idea when this will go to the city council? Um, it, it will be, um... Approximately eight weeks from now, given okay. the timelines. Thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, it was moved by Commissioner Krepke, seconded by Commissioner Carter. Uh, Mr. Maloney, if you'd like to call roll. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Commissioner Carter? Aye. Commissioner Duggan? Aye. Commissioner Holton is absent. Commissioner Krepke? Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. Chair Weeks? Aye. So that passes with five ayes, uh, Commissioner Holton being absent and one vacancy. And that concludes that item. And unless Mr. Triple has anything for us, that will would conclude our meeting today. Yeah, Chair Weeks, for the record, can you, can you repeat who the motion and second was on that? Yes, um, it is. It was moved by Commissioner Krepke and seconded by Commissioner Carter. Thank you. Uh -huh. And staff has no further business for the uh, commission. Thank you, Chair Weeks, and uh, thank you for your time today, Commissioners. Great. So the meeting is adjourned to our next scheduled. No, the meeting is adjourned. To, yes, to our next scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission, which I believe will be September. No. Correct. Thank you all.
Thank you. Good evening.